So, we define the probability of error as probability of detection of a 0 given that a 1 bit is transmitted multiplied by probability of finding 1. So, this is your conditional probability plus probability of detecting a 1 given that you transmitted a 0 multiplied by probability of finding a 0, probability of sending a 0. Now, P 1 is the probability of sending or receiving a 1, P 0 is the probability of sending or receiving a 0. Well, it is not receiving, it is actually uh, sending because receiving is where you are making a mistake, right. Probability of 1, probability of 0. And if I have a pseudo random bit sequence and your message is in general statistical, you will have equal probability of sending a 1 as much as the same as probability of sending a 0 probability of sending a 1 and probability of sending a 0 is the same, which means that p of 1 is half and p of 0 is also half, which means that your bit error rate, which is the probability of error. Remember, we defined bit error rate as probability of error. That is equal to half of, because this is half, this is half. So, half of probability of detecting a 0 given that I have transmitted a 1. And can you identify where that conditional probability is in that plot? Is it the red shaded part or the blue shaded part? Probability of detecting a 0 given that I have transmitted a 1. Probability of detecting a 0 given that I have transmitted a 1, that is blue. Okay. Plus probability of detecting a 1 given that I transmitted a 0, that is red. I detected it as 1, but I actually transmitted it as 0. So, how do I find this and this? Integrate. Integrate from where to where? For the red case, I have to integrate from, this is my decision, i d to infinity. In fact, ideally my probability should go all the way up to infinity. right? So, i d to infinity and probability of 1 given 0 would be from minus infinity to i d. What am I integrating? What should I integrate? This distribution and the distribution we already know. So, integration of this distribution and integration of this distribution with the correct limit is going to actually tell me the bit error rate. This half is coming from probability of transmitting a 1 and probability of transmitting a 0. We are assuming that any information that you are sending is not biased, right. Any voice signal or anything that I am sending will is likely to have equal number of zeros and 1s. Because where are these zeros and 1s coming from in my digital information? I will do sampling quantization. In quantization, I will it is it is it is likely to have you know equal number of zeros and uh, uh, number of 1s, because I, I am likely to have all quantized levels, which means the number of zeros must be the same as number of 1s, right. So, that is why you are having a half. This is only conditional probability. That conditional probability has to get multiplied by the actual probability to get the total probability. These distributions, the question is will these distributions have different variance? Yes. The way I have drawn it, the variance is the same, but ideally the um, not just the variance, the mean is also uh, different. Because the variance are different, the conditional probabilities are not the same, they are different. The areas, the way I have drawn, I have drawn this spread and this spread is different. Uh, is the same, ideally they are different. So, accordingly your integration answers are not going to be the same, they are going to be different. Which is why we have to keep them until the end of the analysis, I will keep these two distributions different. The sigma 1 is broader than sigma naught actually. So, the next job is only algebraic now, you have to just do this integration and it is a nice Gaussian distribution. So, Gaussian is nice because it will, it will end up in some nice integration results. right? So, probability of 0 given 1 is this and you write this in terms of complementary error function. right? This is integration of minus infinity to i d, it is not infinite integral, it is a finite integral. right? So, you define complementary error function as uh, c this 
Comple complementary error function of uh, in terms of variable x is x to infinity e power minus y square dy. This is of this form. So, you can work it out. You have to uh, substitute this y as equal to i minus i 1 by 2 sigma 1 square. You will end up this get being i 1 minus i d by sigma 1 root 2 and probability of 1 given 0 is half complementary error function of i d minus i naught by sigma naught root 2. Right? So, you can write this p of 0 given 1 and 1 given 0 in terms of complementary error functions and it, you will realize that this complementary error function plays a very important role in trying to figure out what your bit error rate is. Right? So, the b r is half of the sum of these two and the sum of these two is I am just adding half. So, there is a half here and there is a half here in this. So, there is a one fourth complementary error function i 1 minus i d by sigma 1 root 2 plus i d minus i naught by sigma 1 uh, sigma naught root 2. Now, you can say that if sigma 1 and sigma naught are equal then what happens? What it turns out is that the b r is now decided by your i d your decision threshold. So, it is important to now say earlier through intuition we said that i d is uh, the point of intersection of the two curves and so on. But uh, now you can actually define what is that point of intersection, the decision current you can uh, define. How do I now find the decision current? You just have to, uh, you, you want to make sure that this point is the same, right? I mean, so this prop, this distribution and this distribution at this point, they have to be the same, that is your ID. So, this distribution when i is substituted by i d and this distribution when i is substituted by i d you just equate it that is your decision threshold right. So, that is what we are going to do next. So, I know this distribution, I know this distribution, I know the point of intersection has to be my i d. So, uh, it is chosen so that this is the first distribution, this is the second distribution, I have just replaced i, I with i d here right. Uh, and then I am algebraically you can manipulate, you multiply it with i d minus i naught by 2 sigma naught square and this sigma 1 by so root 2 pi root 2 pi gets cancelled, sigma 1 goes up here that is sigma 1 by sigma naught. You have this one retained as it is, you have this one come to this side so that is e power minus becomes e power plus. Now, you take logarithm on both sides, you will get i d minus i naught by 2 sigma naught square is equal to this one plus ln of sigma 1 by sigma 1. It will turn out that you can ignore this when compared to these two for most of your decision values. So, you can just have this equation which means that you can take the square root and then write it as i d minus i naught divided by sigma naught is equal to i 1 minus i d divided by sigma 1. So, I know what your uh, i d is now, I can exactly find my i d, what would that be? How do I simplify this now? i d minus i naught times sigma 1 is equal to sigma naught i 1 minus sigma naught i d. So, my i d is equal to sigma naught i 1 plus sigma 1 i naught divided by sigma 1 plus sigma naught. Okay. If my sigma 1 is equal to sigma naught, if this condition is satisfied, which is possible when you are operating in thermal noise limited condition, then my decision threshold is nothing but i 1 plus i naught divided by 2. You just keep it at the half. So, half is best for you. You do not have to bring it low, lower than half. If the noise at top and noise at bottom are noise corresponding to 1 and noise corresponding to 0 are the same, best is to have the decision at the middle. But what decides the quality of your signal? Is my i 1 minus i naught should be large, would that represent a good quality necessarily? Remember this is my i 1, this is my i naught. Is good quality represented by the fact that i 1 and i naught are very different from each other or 
is a good quality represented by the fact that my sigma 1 and sigma naught are very close to uh, close to um, 0 or is it a combination of both let me repeat my question i want to say that my quality of reception is very good so when i have a good quality of reception intuitively it tells me that this i1 and i0 should be very distinguishable not just that the spread corresponding to sigma 1 and spread corresponding to the bit 0 must be very small so a number that represents the quality of your signal should be proportional to i1 minus i0 and should also be proportional to inversely proportional to sigmas okay so you define something called as quality factor the quality factor is id minus i0 by 2 sigma0 which is so this is corresponding to this this previous this uh, same relation that i'm talking about right this is the same relation we took a square root of this and got the decision threshold uh, but the square root of this number which is id minus i0 by sigma0 and i1 minus id by sigma1 that's what you're calling as q factor so this the square is not there in the whole it is because it's a gaussian right so this is a gaussian distribution so this square should be there only for the numerator so this square is only for the numerator that's right yeah this square should be there only for the numerator because this term comes from gaussian and the gaussian has x minus mu the whole square by 2 sigma square so this is not sigma square well this is sigma square or so if i take the square root i will get id minus i naught divided by root 2 sigma naught is equal to i1 minus id divided by root 2 sigma this is what i would get okay but this derivation remains the same because we had done with that square root in place uh, what i want to try to say is that of course we said when sigma 1 equal to sigma naught id is the average and also q is if i substitute sigma 1 is equal to sigma naught you will get i1 minus i0 by sigma 1 plus sigma 0. So, larger separation between the current and which means that the q is large, smaller is your sigma 1 plus sigma 0, then again the q is uh, large.